Now I'm going to talk about QRS complexes, and this is located on page 43 of your workbook. So the QRS complexes um, represent ventricular depolarization. And um, when interpreting ECG rhythms, we're not really interested in the QRS morphology or the QRS shape when it comes to rhythm interpretation um, or uh, its deflection, in other words, whether the QRS is deflected positively or upwards, or whether it's deflected negatively or downwards. The only thing that we're concerned about uh, with respect to the QRS when we're interpreting rhythms is the QRS duration. Is the QRS narrow or is it wide? So um, now the QRS complex may have, um, may not always have a Q wave or an R wave or an S wave, but we continue to call it the QRS complex for simplicity's sake. So uh, in this one, for example, we have a P wave followed by a Q wave and an R wave, but there's no S wave. We still call it a QRS for simplicity's sake. This next one here, we have um, no Q wave, but there's an R wave and an S wave. Again, we call it a QRS complex. And here we have um, no R wave and just a Q wave, or some people call this a QS wave. Uh, and again, we still call this a QRS complex. And as I said in the previous slide, we don't care whether uh, about the shape of the QRS, whether it's up going, down going. The only thing we care about is, is it narrow or is it wide? And a narrow QRS is less than 0.12 second or less than three small squares. Now, some people um, teach that uh, uh, a narrow QRS is equal or less than 0.12, and that is not correct. Uh, a narrow QRS is less than 0.12 second. If a QRS is 0.12 second or greater, it's considered wide. Now, there are various reasons why a QRS might be wide, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But a normal narrow QRS is less than 0.12 second. And there's only one possible way that a QRS can be a narrow, and that's if it goes down, um, if the impulse um, travels down the bundle of Hiss and down both bundle branches, the right and left bundle branches simultaneously. So the only possible way that the QRS can be narrow is if the impulse travels down the bundle of Hiss and both bundle branches simultaneously. I repeated that for a reason. Um, if a QRS is wide, then we have to look, uh, determine whether or not the rhythm is sinus in origin or whether there's some other ectopic focus at play here. So in this rhythm, for example, we have uh, a P wave preceding a Y QRS. We have a P wave preceding a Y QRS, a P wave here, a P wave here, a P wave here. Now I've hand drawn this, so it's not the best drawing. But assuming that the P wave morphology is consistent throughout, that this rhythm is regular, and we can see consistently a P wave preceding each QRS, if that's the case, then we know that this is a sinus rhythm, and that's why I've written an X here. And what's happening is the impulse is traveling down the AV node, the bundle of Hiss, and it may be getting blocked in one of these bundle branches, for example, the left bundle branch. And if there's a block in the left or the right bundle branch, then what happens then is that the impulse travels very rapidly down uh, this branch, which is intact, and the right ventricle will depolarize very quickly. The left ventricle will then depolarize more slowly because the impulse is traveling from muscle cell to muscle cell. So this is why we get a YQRS complex in, in this case. So this is a sinus rhythm with aberrancy or sinus rhythm with a YQRS uh, complex. So the QRS is equal or greater than 0.12 second. Other causes of YQRS include uh, ectopic uh, premature impulses. So for example, uh, here we have a premature ventricular complex in which the underlying rhythm is sinus, but we have this uh, ectopic focus. It fires earlier than expected, and we have this PVC. Uh, and the, again, the QRS and the PVC is wide. Here we have a ventricular tachycardia where we have a wide complex tachycardia without discernible P waves. And uh, if, if you're looking at glitches here, uh, they're just that. They're glitches. They're not P waves. So this is a YQRS without discernible P waves. This is a result of an ectopic focus down here in the ventricle that's firing consistently. And that gives us a ventricular tachycardia. So again, the QRS is equal or greater than 0.12 second.